The ASIC.TO S19J Pro Overclock is here. You can go to their website where you'll be sent to their telegram and there's a pinned message at the top of the window. And it should be up on their website soon, or now, depending on when you're watching this. Of course, though, few things in life are straightforward. And especially so when you're cracking open the case of this hardware that was designed and built in China and never meant to be f***ed with. When you download the firmware, you're first going to need to know which control board you have. There are two main kinds, Xilinux and Beaglebone boards. There are actually more kinds, but in most cases you'll have one of these two, and in even more cases, one of these two firmwares will work anyway. When you take the top off of the case of your control board, if the SD card slot is right next to your Ethernet port, well look at you, you've got a Xilinx board. Choose this file. If your SD card slot is in a harder to reach spot on the opposite side of the board from the Ethernet port, then you are a proud Beaglebone board owner. Choose this file instead. It's got BB right in the name, Beaglebone. To use this firmware, you'll need a micro SD card that is very small in capacity. Most of the time, a 16 gigabit card will work, but fun fact, sometimes it won't. So, to be perfectly safe, find yourself a 4 or 8 gigabyte micro SD card. They're on Amazon, I'll put a link to some in the description. After you've downloaded the .gz file, you'll need to decompress the file before putting it onto your SD card. I'm on a Mac, and I used RAR Extractor to do this. It's free! Now, looking at your 4 or 8 gigabyte micro SD card, make sure it's formatted to FAT32. They typically already are out of the box, but if you were using this in something else, just make sure it's FAT32. Look up how to format an SD card as FAT32 and do that. With your card, the correct format and empty, simply extract all the files directly onto the card. No folders, no other files. That's it! It's installed. Now, take your micro SD card over to your miner, yank out the power cables from your S19J Pro, and insert the card into the SD card slot on the control board. Plug your machine back in, and it'll take a couple of minutes to boot up. It should keep the same IP address that it had before, so you won't have to do anything, but instead of seeing this, now you'll see this. Let it run its course, and you can click log on the bottom there if you want to see what it's actually doing while you wait. It'll take, I don't know, about three or four minutes to spin up to the speed that it's set at initially. Overclocking. So this machine was hashing at 104 terahash. That's just great. Now let's push it to 120. After your machine is done booting up, you can go over to mining on the left, then overclocking, and you can see all the boards, and you can actually see what each individual chip is doing. The yellow colored chips are under performing for whatever reason. This is their hash rates and you can see the yellow ones are lower than the rest. But while the machine is still ramping up, you can see that the yellow squares kind of dance around all over the place. So before doing any tweaking, let it mine for like 10 minutes and it'll fall into a groove. Okay, now it's been mining for about 10 minutes and you can see there are a few yellow chips and one red one. In order to make any changes to the overclock, you'll first click where it says board, then change the drop down to frequency. Now up at the overclock preset, click that and choose disable. Now you're in full control of the clock speed and voltage. Good luck. Above each board, you've got three squares, a black one, a yellow one, and a red one. If you click on the yellow square, it'll turn down the frequency of just the yellow chips by 5 MHz. If you click on the red square, it'll turn down the frequency of the red chips by 10 MHz. This is you tuning the chips so that you can try to squeeze the right amount of hash power out of the underperforming chips. You can also click on the black square, which will crank up the frequency on any of the chips that are performing normally. That's what you get for doing a good job, chip. Then, on the upper right of your screen, hit save, then apply, and your miner will restart. Anytime you make any changes at all, the miner will restart. That's what Auto-Tune does, and that's why it takes so long, because it's just trying a zillion combinations of voltage and frequency and then restarting between each one. Auto-Tune will be available in an upcoming update of the ASIC.TO firmware, but it's not in this one. Another way you can change the way your S19J is running is with this global button here. 400 doesn't seem fast enough. This machine's only hashing at 104 terahertz, so let's try 505 megahertz and see what it does. There's also a global voltage slider. Why not bump that up a peg since we're right here anyway? Unfortunately, there is no one correct setting on these machines. The silicone lottery comes into play big time with ASIC miners. So every machine will do its best with slightly different settings. You really have to play around with them a bit in order to squeeze the most terahashes out of each one of your machines. But you can, just make sure you keep an eye on those temperatures. Back at the dashboard, you've got this graph. So maybe take out a piece of paper and write down any changes you make, and you can come back and look at the graph and see which one of your changes pushed your miner the fastest while keeping it in a good temperature range. Of course, if you're immersion cooling your machines, you get to push them a bit harder, a bit safer. If you don't want to tinker around with all the individual chip frequencies and voltages and all this nonsense, you can just pick a preset and let her rip. The software is being offered to you for free, and in exchange for the opportunity to push your miners a little faster, ASIC.TO will divert about 3% of your hash rate into their own pockets for giving you the keys to this little rocket boost.
master. It's like your boss giving you a raise from $100,000 a year to $115,000 a year, but then charging you 4,000 bucks to use the company car. Sure, we're all giving 4,000 bucks to the guy, but we're coming out ahead nine grand in this completely made up scenario. Over at the she shed, I've got just a single miner immersion cooled right now, but that little guy is running at 117 terahash, totally stable with temperatures in the 60s Celsius. Looks like it's in the 600 to 620 megahertz range for the chips at 13.8 volts. This miner's pulling 14 amps too, so at 240 volts, that's like 3,400 watts. That's not bad. 